because, you know, and going back to the whole domination thing, there was a, it was Star Wars Rebels. It was the last duel between Maul and Obi-Wan, and Obi-Wan was saying, like, you know, if you define yourself by what you possess and your ability to dominate, then you truly have nothing. I put my phone on, do not disturb. Don't want to talk, I don't want to hear a word. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the 10th episode of the Conscious Cast. Double digits. Double digits, bro. Damn. I think we started this late May and now it's early August. So hell yeah, man. We're we're still here <laughs> after all this time. So for everyone who has watched the Conscious Cast up until this point, big shout out to you. You are fueling the income on this channel. <laughs> oh, zero! Non-existent income. Ad no. revenue? What's that? No, no, it's not about that. You know, you guys, whoever knows uh, this Conscious Cast, you know, it's all about, you know, just sharing perspective, sharing our own experience, and if it helps you, it helps you. If you disagree, yeah. well, fuck, all right? Well, Fuck the money, it's about <laughs> dropping knowledge it's about and talking about profound shit. Profound shit. All right, yes. so, today we're talking about the environment. I was talking to Cole about this a little bit. Um, the pollution is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. We gotta get green out here, man. We gotta get fucking green. Don't <laughs> use water. You're using yeah. too much water. Dude, water is so bad for you. I can't even... <laughs> no, I'm joking. But for real? Oh. Yeah, yeah, for real. I was outside in the green, like, uh, outside meditating in nature as I usually am for, you know, for just... I really wanted to clear my mind and uh, just, you know, just change my environment from being indoors because that's typically where I feel the need to go outside and as I was meditating sometimes like when you really let go of your thoughts and you really just enter that zen mode state where your body is no longer like well no 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 I should say when your mind is no longer like all right Cal 10 more minutes left you know yeah. like you know what I mean it's trying it's trying to pull you out of that state and pull yeah. you back into what you're used it's, to it's um David Goggins calls yeah. it I think the bitch voice or something like okay, that the bitch voice and okay. it's like you know there's that voice where it's just like you're almost done yeah you can yeah. stop right yep, now yep. but you have to shut out that voice yep. and keep going yeah 100 but that's in more of the active <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I imagine like this, the same thing applies yeah. to the passive yeah 100 percent. yeah 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 um but then then again like in the passive it, it in the active state it's more of pushing the voice out of your head whereas mm -hmm. opposed to the passive state it's about being in a position where that voice has has no volume mm, in your head. Yeah, no power, no weight. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And as I was meditating, right, I was, as that voice started to die off without me being aware of it, you know, mm -hmm. my body, I could feel my body naturally accepting, like, okay, we're here now, this is cool, you know, it's not as bad as my mind was making out to be, and mm -hmm. I was getting into that meditative state, and then, like, maybe, like, ten minutes go by, I'm just, like, you know, chilling there, a couple flies flying on my face and shit, mm -hmm. I... Received a revelation from God. No, no I received uh, it's like a divine intervention. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just had this kind of like a realization. It just kind of hit me. And sometimes, like when you get in a meditative state, it's like you start thinking like randomly, but it's very clear. You know, it's very, um, I guess you could say, with a message is there's no jumping around the message. It's there. It's bold and. What I realized was... It's what, italicized. It's, it's got the Times New Roman font. <laughs> you know, all that. has the citations and everything. 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 And so... A plus MLA. Yeah, 100%. And so pretty much I realized that nature does not compare and it does not judge you, right? And so you may be like, Cal, no shit, all right? But like when you, re no, when you really feel this, right? And you really like... And like experience it rather than just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because we're typically in environments. Here, and I'll rephrase that. When we're in environments that heavily judge, heavily compare, which you know, pop culture, dominant society, human beings in general, very are. We're very mm -hmm. conditioned to that state. You can see the difference, and the difference between that and this is like, okay, I can accept all that is. Everything around me, the way it is, you know, whether I like it, dislike it, I agree with it, disagree with it, everything is neutral, it's just there, and nature's not judging me back. It's ex yeah. it, Nature doesn't give a fuck about me, right? Yeah. Nature doesn't give a fuck about what I like, to agree with, it doesn't care, like, if I want this tree to go down, you know, like, obviously I can, make, I can take physical action to, you know, change yeah. that, but it doesn't care about that. It cares mm -hmm. about, like, 
everything within this moment that is actually legit. And then when you compare that to environments that, like, say you're with your friends or, you know, you're just, like, scrolling through Instagram or something like that, when you're yeah. constantly comparing of things how it should be, it reinforces that, right? Mm -hmm. And it kind of reflects that back to you and you see a big difference in the environments you're in. So yeah. for me, this was like, damn, bro. I was like, it's it's awesome just, just to feel that, you know, really experience it. And just, once again, your connection with nature enhances, you know, yeah. because like, imagine, like, I know I accept you for who you are. You know, yeah. you accept me for who I am, you know? And that's, nature accepts you for who you are, yeah. you know? And people who it makes you see the real right it connects with your authenticity which we touch on a lot on this yeah. channel and like going back to the nature thing like there's from a scientific standpoint from what i've heard and like my small amount of research i've done yeah. psychologically or neurologically mm. technically going outside has a, like obtaining sunlight has mm. a very positive yes. effect yeah. on your yeah. brain yeah. because it's like you're enjoying like hey this is good I'm enjoying good right now. No. You know, like it's best to go outside and like maybe have your breakfast on a nice day yeah. outside once you wake up yeah. because it'll help you, it'll help your brain get like kind of focused and prepared for the day that's going to come. And, you know, it helps you stay awake. You know, it'll help you wake up early. Like I, I try and when I'm not, you know, working, like mm, I'm waking yeah. up really early. Yeah. But even then, I'll <laughs> always. Go out and fish black. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But I'll drink. Like, I'll, it's good to drink water and go outside to just get your body going. Yeah, yeah, like, probably. I'll kill my entire fucking, like, almost 26-gallon water bottle before I fucking take a shower in the morning. 26 it, gallons? I mean, 26 <laughs> ounce. <water laughs> I was like, God damn! I'm basically... Wheels are turning too <laughs> yeah, fast. No, no, but, yeah, 26 ounce water bottle. Yeah. And, mm. and, you know, then I'll take a shower. But, you know, sometimes when it's, like, a weekend or I have time to wake up, you know, later yeah. and it's the sun's out, I'll mm. drink that water, go outside, mm -hmm. absorb the rays, get some vitamin D yeah. and go, you know, move on mm -hmm. with my day. Yeah. But going back to the nature thing, you know, like it's good to take it in like all, like as much as you can. I'm not saying you got to be a feral human and live out in the wild <laughs> <laughs> or, if you, but if you want to be my guest. Yeah. 100%. But you know, the thing is, for me, going like going back to nature in relation to that Zen mode, mm. I I've reached I reached like complete and total Zen mode once because I was there. It was a lightning storm. Mm. It was raining outside. This was at my at the house I grew up in, and there's this big rock. It's like a big quartz rock. That's like just in my in like just a big ass rock right next to my driveway, and I brought out a towel, threw it on the floor. Just meditated, you know, threw a bathing suit on because I knew it was going to get wet. I just sat out there in the storm with my shirt oh, on and, shit. like, my shirt off yeah, and meditated. Yeah, yeah. Damn. And, like, with the only thing, the only thing in my mind was the raindrops and the lightning. Mm -hmm. And it was fucking probably one of the most, the probably one of the best experiences of my entire life. Because I was, because everything, there was only, like, I was... Like, like you said, nature didn't care about me, but it was imprinting on me in that, <laughs> yeah. in that moment <laughs> yep. because it was like, it felt like it was almost speaking to me. Mm -hmm. Just the juxtaposition of the calming of the rain yeah. to the powerful, like striking of lightning and, yeah. the, and, the, and like the flash of lightning and the echoes of thunder. Mm. And it's just being, being one with the forces that are externally like... Out of your control. Yeah, yeah. You can't fucking control that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't stop the yeah. rain. Uh -huh. You must accept and continue. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, I became one with that storm. Uh -huh. yeah. And it was like, it was, I had, all the stress was absolved and mm -hmm. like I was left to just exist in this torrent yeah. of, yeah. you know, of fucking water and thunder, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. And it was like, it was the only way I can necessarily explain how it felt. It was you like really can't even put it into words. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it was like it felt like the like think of it this way. I had like think of the stress as like a fresh like a coat of paint, like a shittily done coat of paint, <laughs> and the rain was like a power washer cutting through all the excess mm -hmm. and and all the stuff that doesn't matter, yeah. revealing like. Think of it like bird shit on a statue. <laughs> That's how it is. Oh yeah, I was literally just thinking about and that. Then you oh, have, yeah. then you have the art, the image of art. Yeah. But 
the echoes of like thunder and lightning are like resonating with the soul. Yeah. You know, it's like be free of the tainted like coat of paint that is on you, you know, like show the true color mm -hmm. and let your soul echo through your personality and your body like a like a fucking like clap of thunder. Yeah. That's, you know, dude, that, I mean, like, what you just described there is, like, one of the big, I guess you could say, like, slogans I have on this channel. It's, like, uncovering the cover, right? Like, yeah. what has always been there all along, right? Mm -hmm. It's just become, within our conscious mind, we, like, focus on such other things, you know, that yeah. we forget about that. We're distracted by the external. Exactly. And a lot of people, because they're too busy, they're too busy looking at somebody else yeah. Yeah. to realize what's going on with them. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, the bird shit on the statue, right? I was reading a book last summer. It was like, picture like, it, I don't, it wasn't, it was about the mind, but it wasn't specifically in relation to meditation or anything like that. It was, I think it might have been, um, but it was talking, it was mainly in regards to athletes and how athletes, a lot of times, you know, they doubt themselves, right? And each doubt they have on themselves is like, shit, throwing them, it's like throwing shit on themselves. And then they throw more and more and more shit on themselves Right, that golden statue that's always been under, like, who they truly are, right? Mm -hmm. it, it turns into a shit statue, right? Yeah. And it's like, the more you uncover, like, the shit, right? The more that flows through you, mm -hmm. right? And then it's like, I think a lot of times we try and solve our problems with thought. And I, I literally, uh, like an hour ago, finished a script on this that I'm going to uh, post a video for this maybe upcoming Friday. So look out. Um, but pretty much, like, the uncovering the covered, right? It's... It's crazy because we think we have to do so much in order to receive peace, right? So we try yeah. and we try and get peace external, like yes. through external oh means, God. right? And, Absolutely. But, yeah, yeah. But if we can, if we can go within ourselves, it's so all like I think. I think it says like a lot of one of the big quotes I see on Instagram is the mind will say, once everything out there is okay, I can find peace in here. Yeah. The soul will say, once I find peace in here. Oh, yeah, like, once I find peace in here, everything out there will be fine. You know, like, it's, it's, it's like, I don't know if yeah. that's exactly, I'm like, the first part was right, the second part was a little bit, but you understand where I'm going with yeah. that, right? So you, like, because everything, and that second part's true. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, everything is internalized, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, especially within our experience, like, the human experience, right? Like, like we say a lot of times, like, we have the power to respond to situations. Like, we don't have control of, like, what's going on out there, you know, the lightning storm, right? But if we can kind of, like, like what we say a lot on this channel, where we take a step back and just mm -hmm. be with everything that is in existence right here and now, yeah. right? And realize, like, okay, this shit, fuck, like, whatever whatever kind of situation you're in, you'd be like, okay, this shit kind of sucks, yeah. right? And you're like, but it's cool, though. Like, I'm, I'm still alive, you know, but I got everything I have, you know? Yeah. We're, we're in the moment, we're here, we're now, and then, but, like, then how you respond is up to you. Yeah. And going back to the whole, once your soul is aligned, like in line internally, everything else will yeah. come into place. That's probably the like. That's probably the the one thing I could, I would tell everybody in the world. It's like stop <laughs> fucking around with everybody else's <laughs> shit. It's primary, and dude. Yeah. Take it back and focus on yep. yourself. Take it back. Like cut cut the fucking fog <laughs> chains of <laughs> people the... assigning you. <laughs> yep, like yep. Oh, and fog stuff. chains. Yep. And like another like going back to the episode on purpose. I think it was mm -hmm. and first one. Yeah, and it was like, like, it's, it's really weird because like a lot of people, especially our age, think that they will find the solution to their pain in another person. People go looking for these relationships, and the reason they don't work is because they're not ready internally for one. It's because not, it, people hate to admit that you have to be worthy of someone's love by yourself before you can mm. start being ready to receive yeah. it, you know? Yeah. Like, you can't go looking like, this girl will fix my problems. This guy will fix my problems. <laughs> nope. nope. You know, they, them will fix my yeah, problems. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. You're not going to find, like, any success in love unless you find peace within yourself. Oh, 100%. You know, you can't, you can't understand someone else until you truly understand yourself oh, like yeah, that dude. intimately. Yeah. And like it's it's really kind of 
it's unhealthy that not a lot of people understand this hmm. because they're too preoccupied with the external to take a fucking step back mm, and yep. look at what's going on yeah. with them. Like, yeah. people can't find the root of the problem within themselves. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, you know, me and you, like, we know what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But or that's where. because we had either... We either checked our own reality or reality... Yeah, we keep it real, man. Yeah, yeah or reality yeah. checked us. Yeah, 100%. And, like, there comes a... Like, for me, you know, and maybe for you, too... There, there comes a point in your life where you realize you're done. Like, worrying about everything else. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes, yeah. you know, you have to be conscious about not worrying about yeah. everything else. Oh, for sure, bro. But, for me personally, it there was, a, like, a revelation that was like, oh, none of this matters. And then once you figure out that mm. none of all the stuff people tell you matters, yeah. you, can, you can determine what matters yeah. for you. Dude, yeah, and you, were you done? Yeah. Okay. Yo, what, what? Like, I actually wanted to touch on this. Like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to steer the episode in this direction, but you did anyway, so mm-hmm. we're good. Um, it's crazy because like people a lot of times be like, I think like, my purpose is like such and such, right? I think I was put on this planet to do such and such, right? And I recognize it, I respect it, right? But when you look at it from like a universal perspective, right? Kind of like what I was saying earlier, like the nature doesn't give a fuck part. Mm-hmm. I think our purpose is just to exist, right? And then, like, through that existence, we, like you said... Determine the purpose. Determine the purpose. We yeah. create and craft whatever we, vision, yeah. mission, we want we out our, of that. Yeah, we give our life meaning. Yeah, we give our life meaning. And luckily, through our experience, like, that is just so valuable, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, don't get me wrong, like, cats, plants, like, those are some of the most peaceful beings like, out there, but the fact that we can manifest what we want hypothetically into existence Mm -hmm. is incredible, right? I mean, it is just insane when you really take a step back and look at that, because other animals, plants can't do that, right? And, like, I mean, look at the world, like, look at where we are right now, like, I mean, that's, this is literally that, like, this couch was an idea at one point, Mm -hmm. and then it fucking became a couch, all right? So, it's like a matter of enforcing your will upon, like, the universe, for lack of a better word. But, like, like going back to, like, the purpose thing, that's also very determined by your environment. Like, yeah. surround like surround yourself with people who you want to be. Yeah. But don't worry about becoming someone else. You know, it's like, if you hang around, like, I, I forget what the, um... Five what most people you hang around? Yeah, no, it was like, I think it was on some, some, like, picture... Of like like a like a poster in in, a, in like middle school, it was like if a broken pencil is around a bunch of sharpened pencils, eventually the broken pencil is gonna need to get you know figure out hey I'm not sharp enough <laughs> you know if you hang around a bunch of sharp pencils you're gonna get sharper too yeah yeah, See, yeah. my my sensei has like a shirt that. that he wears all the time and it's iron sharpens iron and man sharpens man and that mm-hmm. is that's very big because it's like your environment will determine who you become Thanks. and how how good you will become as well. Yeah, but, so it's like we got, essentially, got these motherfuckers out here <laughs> trying to lead you, <laughs> trying to lead you astray. Yeah. And it's not, it's your responsibility as yourself to kind of weed out those who are going to fuck with you, you yeah. know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, I forget what it was but it's like it was something about like getting rid of fake people that's very much a big problem because for my experience as well especially with girls because it's like in my experience in our situation um, there's a lot of girls who need constant validation and attention oh yeah and they'll surround themselves with these people that don't really give a fuck about her yeah or just give a fuck about her body, not really her. Yeah, yeah, that and like you know, I don't. I we're specifying with her, but I I meant to broaden the horizon. It doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. If you like, you don't need someone to tell you who like how you know how how cool you are. I guess you know. Yeah. And it's yeah. like it's it's weird because guys aren't like we were talking about this before. Are are like kind of 
social role, I guess, I don't know, isn't quantified by looks necessarily. It's quantified by more our actions and our mm, aspirations. Okay, okay. Whereas, like with women, at least the way society has been perpetuated, they're they're kind of it's very much propagated by their looks and like how people react to them. Like if they have a lot of attention and they can just kind of turn people down mm. because they feel like they're up here and on this pedestal because they have this the illusional attention. pedestal. Yeah, and they have all this attention. Yeah, it's like you know. It kind of, when they're not on that pedestal, yeah. they feel shitty about themselves. 100%. And, dude, think about it like this. I, I, I don't know if I told you this, but it's very hard for people to, like, like, if someone I randomly met and, you know, was, like, say, just, like, a new person, a, a new dude I meet at the gym, right? Just, like, you know, talking. He's like, oh, yo, bro, we should work out sometime. I'm usually, like, eh, like I, can't, I, I usually am very cautious of the people that I let into my life, yeah. you know? And... The one way to get straight to my heart and past all the boundaries and limitations is being a hot chick, all right? Like, that is the number one. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, if you're hot, man, you're like, I'm sorry, I hate to say it, but, we're, like... We're, we're chimp brain. Yeah, we're, we're chimp. Wired, yeah, we're wired just, that way. Dude, I don't give a fuck. Like, listen, I'm like, hey, here's my number. You know, contact me. You can come over whenever you want. I'll you're pay for your... <laughs> you're looking <laughs> smoking. Yeah, I will yeah. simp. But, li- exactly, right? I mean, obviously, I'm not going to simp to, like, you know, crazy extent. But, you know, obviously, if she's a hot individual and a person that I'm attracted to, I'm going to want to keep talking to that person, you know, and hopefully lead to further events, such as our relationship, you know, so on and so on. But... All the nitty-gritty that occurs uh, within those uh, Yeah. So, I think a lot of females, and even guys, um, to some extent, know this, right? They know that they have have a way of getting past these certain boundaries, right? They have a way of influencing and persuading people, right, um, to get what they want, right? So kind of like you said, that's what they're used to, right? Those are the standards that they kind of live by and they expect from the external reality, right, because they're so used to that. Yeah. So what happens when that doesn't happen, right? Yeah, exactly. What, what happens when, that, when that standard's not met, right? Mm-hmm. When that thing doesn't go according to plan, like, like, 1% of the time, right? Because most hot individuals right, usually get it their way, right? Yeah. They, and, like, I'm not saying this to, you know, create any stereotype. I'm not saying this, what speaking did, from yeah. my own experience, yeah, you know. and anything, Yeah, you know? and I think it's a big thing of it is grounding yourself, you know. And oh, really, absolutely. Yeah, it's like, and, and one of the greatest things is, Grounding yourself in environments where that doesn't exist, you know, mm-hmm. where where like the gym. <laughs> the yeah, yeah. I, you were talking yeah. about like you know like that and I'm, like the previous topic that we were just discussing, and I don't can't remember exactly what you were talking about. But yeah, you get the gist. Yeah. The thing is like, like going back to the simplicity of like when that's like when you lose the pedestal, like the illusion, the illusory pedestal, you're only left with yourself. But that's like, like that's why I'm saying, like, where those when you when you exist only by yourself yeah, and, and yeah. like that environment, that's a gym because it's or you, nature. yeah, or nature. It's either you and the wild, or it's you and the weights. Uh-huh. And, wild weights, yeah. <laughs> and it's like there is where you can get true, like, self growth done. You can see yourself too. You can really learn about yourself. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like. That's one of those things where you can, or like a sensory deprivation tank. That's that's like one of the best ones because it's like, that is the most extreme methods of meditation where it's it's um, it's you are detached from literally gravity, and you are left to float, yeah. in darkness, mm. and think. Yeah. That is. That is uh, that is like yeah, that's deep. It's very yeah, deep. Exactly. Yeah. That's that is the epitome of solitude. And, like, you cannot see, you cannot fucking hear yeah. outside of the water that you are currently laying in, <laughs> and you were just floating. Yeah. And that is, like, you need to divorce yourself from the pedestal and from all these other prying eyes mm-hmm. that seek your favor. But the only real favor that anyone should be expecting from you is, like, Probably nothing, you know. They like it's like the hot chick thing again. Everybody, you know, if you're a hot girl, 
you get on the, there's going to be a more than likely enough chance you're going to have a bunch of horny dudes in your DMs trying to get in your pants. That's just. Listen, how, I'm not with them. We're not saying that to be biased. We're saying this that's, from objective that's research. How, that's how it is. <laughs> I'm just telling you how it is, man. And, and like, yeah. if you can, div- like, if you can just cut yourself off from everybody who wants to get something from you. And look, at the, to an end, and, yep. and, and look at the other people around you that want to... The only thing they expect from you is to be the best version of them, of yourself. Yeah. Like, you know, like me and you, for example. Yeah. Like, we're boys, and mm-hmm. we are always trying to push each other. Yeah. You know, it's like we're yep. saying, like, we're always talking about, like, hey, what did you do at the gym today? Yeah. You know, how we... Like, different methods of exercise yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, to see, like, us... To help each other become the best people yeah. we can yep. be. Sure. And, like... I personally like to surround myself with people that have wildly different, you know, viewpoints yeah. from me so I can get better perspective, mm-hmm. so I can understand better yeah. what I'm not directly in contact with. Yeah. While not surrounding myself with, you know, extremists, you know, yeah, like, yeah, whole, like absolutists and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you have, you know, some, you let, sometimes a snake gets in the fucking yeah, apple, yeah. apple fucking. What is it? Um, basket. Yes, apple basket, apple crate. That's what I was yeah. looking for. And you know, but it's, it's still you know you can see the different the yeah. difference. You see the fucking green serpent amongst the colorful yeah. fruit, mm-hmm. and you can pick it out immediately yeah. uh-huh. if you if you know how to look for it. Yeah, because you've got you can't really be worrying about all like you have to stop worrying about everybody else and start worrying about yourself. That's just how it is. You have to put yourself in situations and environments in which you can grow personally better. But not be weighed down by the environment that of people you're around. Or just, like, it's it's a matter of, like, it's also, it's where you're located and the people that are with you. They're two different types of environments. And like, but they're the same at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're in a fucking crime-ridden city and there's shit, there's danger everywhere. You know, people are fucking overdosing on drugs. People are getting shot. You're in Detroit. <laughs> but what, like, um, Simpler terms. Yeah. Detroit. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, you gotta get the fuck out of there any way you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, make it out the hood. There yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get stuck in the trap. But yeah. it, but the trap the trap can also be fucking people. Yeah, yeah. If you get stuck in these social circles where people are either inflating your ego yeah, so they can kind of, you know, like kind of steer you. Like that's a lot of things. You know, back going back to the yeah. popular girls thing. That's the deal. They get in these circles and they change themselves so they can fit in. Yeah, when we look at high school. That's, oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, but it's like, you don't even, you don't need to fit into anything. Yeah. Like, the whole deal is about being a person we're all different. Yeah. You're, what yeah. makes you unique is what makes people like you. Mm. And if, but if you're in this kind of hen house of, like, sirens or whatever, you know, people that are whispering shit in your ear to get you to come to their group so they can mm. control you yeah, valid. you gotta get the fuck out of there yeah you can't be dealing with that bullshit you know and like people are dominated by these mindsets and and they're weakened by it and you know that's why I don't allow myself to become too attached to one mindset necessarily mm. oh yeah unless yeah, it's definitely. productive for yeah. me but even then it's like it's yeah, you still got to question it. You got to think of it. You got to look at different s- schools of thought, like uh-huh. a, like a painter's palette. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? Yeah, you, yeah, you have yeah, your yeah, different yeah. colors. You can see them all together, uh-huh. but you have the option to combine them uh-huh. as you wish. Yeah, facts. There are worse. There are combinations that don't necessarily make the prettiest colors, mm. but sometimes that dark color is what you need to get through something. Yeah, and that's 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 the real, right? The yeah. real is the good, the bad, the ugly. You know, mm-hmm. the negative, the positive. Right? It's all that. Yeah. It's all that, and most times, and not, it's boring, you know? It's like, oh, yeah. yeah, you get the boring avenue, but that boring avenue leads to the best result possible, yeah, you exactly. know? And maybe, okay, maybe if, like, okay, you, you want to go party for a night, you know, rather than reading a book on a couch, I get it, I understand, mm-hmm. right? But it's, yeah, like, when you surround yourself with certain environments and people that just reinforce these values and make them appear as truths, right? It's very, and, like, you, you don't have a person around you that, like, checks you, you know? Yes. Like, you know, it doesn't, like, when I mean checks you, I mean, like, brings up a perspective that may challenge your already formed yeah. beliefs, you know? And, like, like you touched on, challenging your own beliefs is so important, right? You know, I have, a, I'm, 
I've been really often, uh, re- like, very much been challenging my own beliefs and, like, mm-hmm. questioning it. I'm like, because these, these beliefs, you know, into my, my mind, they're conclusions, right? Yeah. But as I challenge them, and, like, other people in my environment, whether I be watching YouTube videos, like, you gotta search that stuff out, you know, because yeah. you're not naturally gonna wanna search that stuff out, right? You gotta, you gotta step outside your comfort zone and fucking search for it, you know? Yeah. Whether that be a person, a perspective, right? A different school of thought. Mm-hmm. And then that's what brings in that new information that could be ugly, it could, it, but it's real, you know? Like, yeah. it's real. I mean, obviously, you know, check it, source, you know, all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. But you check it, it's legit, you know, you'd be like, okay, shit, this is... I gotta take this into consideration and yeah. then, like compare that with like your already formed beliefs. Maybe cut some stuff out. Yeah, but I'll cut some people out. Too. Cut cut some people out too. I mean, it's crazy because we, as individuals, you know, want to fit in. You know, we want to have friends. We want to have these mm. group contacts. You know, and like it's crazy because sometimes I would go to parties and. I'd be, like, the only dude not drinking, right? Mm-hmm. And people would be like, yeah, why the fuck are you not drinking? And I'm like, I, mean, I just don't want to drink, you know? Mm-hmm. But And I feel that peer pressure. I feel that, like, obviously not with you guys or anything like that. Yeah. It is separate. But I feel, like, that pressure to fit that social standard. And I'm just like, fuck, man. Like, maybe yeah. I should just drink. But I know deep down inside who I am, right? Yeah, exactly. I know that real person. And if I switch over and do something I really don't, don't agree, want it. Don't, don't agree don't, with. Don't, don't agree with, and I'm kind of being pushed to do, just to fit in with them and reinforce their values. Yeah, that's fake, man. That's oh, not, yeah. that's not keeping it real with yourself yeah, exactly. in the real world around you. Yeah, like the one thing that you should never compromise for anybody or anything yeah. is your moral, yeah. your morals. Yeah, man. Who you who you are, what you truly yeah. believe is right. Yeah. Do not compromise that for anyone. Yeah. Or your dreams. Yeah, man. Or like those two. Those those are like the two things because. If you keep your moral compass straight, I'm not saying you got to be like, you know, obey yeah. the law, like, well, you should obey the law, <laughs> but I'm saying like, if you shouldn't like, think of anything as absolute, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but keep, that margin figure, of error. figure out what you know is right, yeah. and then from there, walk that line until you get to where you need to go. Yeah, 100%. And like, it's so fucking stupid watching people run around in circles trying to get, garner attention from other people as if it's going to get them any further in life. <laughs> Because I, I uh-huh. this is I saw this recently. It was this uh, Captain America like hitting the heavy bag? Yeah, and it was like a TikTok or something. But I saw it on Instagram because fuck Chinese spyware, <laughs> fuck TikTok. I don't, I don't have that shit. Yeah, yeah. But nonetheless, it's like it was just Captain America hitting the bag with some like you know, like calm, heavy like kind of heavy guitar strumming in the background. I think it was like Sweet Dreams by like Alice Cooper or something like that. Okay. But he was just punching the bag, and it was just these lines of text. I was just like, "Fuck attention, become a ghost, mm. and shock everybody with the results." Yeah, and I, that like, unintentionally, that's kind of what I did this summer. I've been, because I've been grinding work. I've been always working, and you know, I'm chasing the bag, but I'm not. Cha- I'm not chasing the bag. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. Like, gotcha. I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it for the experience. And, you know, the money's good, but it's not what matters. What matters is being, like, at a serious opportunity for an entire summer. Mm. I lost my summer, but the trade-off was, equal, like, equal. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And, like, people didn't see me. I didn't get the chance to do what I wanted necessarily this summer, but it doesn't matter because I got something more out of it. Yeah, 100%. The results are not, like, more knowledge in what I want to do and a fucking thick wallet. Like, but one is a byproduct of the other, you know, like I, I went to work, I, I learned all this shit. I'm doing real, real work, like proper experience in a corporate environment, in an environment that I want to take place in, but the money is a byproduct of that, you know, and it's great because it's like, you can't be, you know, going back to chasing the false, Mm. false pursuits, it's like. You know, you can't let people dictate what you're running after. You can't yeah, be, yeah. and the one thing people refuse to admit is there's no fuck, there's no fucking shortcuts. Yeah, there's not. There's no shortcut. Yeah, you got to be able to like the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, but you can't take the, you can't take your bike up the staircase. Yeah, <laughs> and like people, people try and plant those ideas in their head. 
and you're in the wrong circles. People are just like, you don't need to do that. That's hard work. And, like, they kind of feed that bi- that voice in your head, the bitch voice like, that yeah. David Goggins says. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, they feed that voice in your head that's like, quit. It's too hard. They tell you it's too hard. But the thing is about other people telling you it's really hard and you do it anyway, back again, shock them with the results. Yeah. It's like when it's like when you make a really big like body body transformation. Mm. You know, you, oh, you yeah. use the summer to get shredded and yeah. just drown Work out everybody. Work in the darkness. Exactly. Work in the darkness, and then when someone shines that light on you, you'll be fucking glowing. Hell yeah. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was in the gym, and uh, yeah, like I think it was like two days ago, and. Yeah, I mean, just bringing it back to this whole expectation bullshit, you know, and it's like, I think we all fall into this trap, you know, or at least we all have, you know, at least I don't do it as much as I used to, but man, just setting expectations and then like reality doesn't set those expectations, Mm -hmm. like, you're going to be disappointed, right? Because like, you're not getting what you want, right? And, you know, believe it or not, you're not always going to get what you want, like that golden rule, you know? But Rolling Stones, you yeah, can't well, always get what you want. Yeah, you can't always get what you want. And so, whether that be for me, like YouTube, whether that be in the gym, like a lot of times, I just feel this, and I, I recognize it. I don't act through it, right? Like I don't, I don't say I'm angry, right? I say I'm feeling angry, right? Like that. There's a difference there, right? Like yeah. you are the emotion versus like okay, I'm feel, I I feel this emotion within me, yeah. and so like within the gym. And this can relate back to what we were talking about earlier. We get very defensive over our self image, right? Like how oh, we yeah. want how we want people to think of us, you know. And we, like we've been conditioned this way, right? It's it's not our fault. It's just the way we've been raised, yeah. right? And the environment we live in. And so, like, I consider myself, at least in the gym, you know, I, I consider myself to have a good amount of gains. But you know, and what you call it? I was talking to this dude and. I, I, I asked him for advice for benching, you know, and with my mind was like, dude, and I, I said this within, my, I think the first podcast we had here, it's like I was setting these expectations and beliefs that like, oh, this dude thinks he's like the hot shit and he just give, give everyone oh, yeah, advice to yeah, like, I don't, I don't actually believe in these beliefs, yeah. but it's just, it's just like what my mind is thinking of, right? Yeah. And I recognize it the as un- that. Yeah, it's the, the negative voice. Yeah, exactly. And, but if you, like, and I, I was doing that with working out but I was also fe- like kind, kind of in a sense getting a- involved in those because I was feeling the emotions with that. Like I was feeling less than yeah. right when I was in the gym because this guy could bench more weight than me. I'm like, that's just what he can bench and this is what I can bench. Yeah. It should not be comparable. Mm-hmm. But and even uh, it's going to be applied to other situations such on YouTube. Like, okay, I'm getting these views and this guy's getting this views, right? Since he's getting more views, he's better than me, right? And maybe in some type of standardized sense, yeah. But, like, in the absolute sense, no, right? Like, it's no comparisons, no judgments aside, just how it is. Mm -hmm. And, like, if we're able to be aware of what the fuck is going on in the sense that, like, okay, that negative voice is there. And it's saying all this shit. And we can see, we can be aware of the illusion, right? And be aware of, like, that conditioning that's there. We can utilize that. To help better us in the future, right? So, mm-hmm. like, every single time that comes up, I feel as though I'll be able to take, like, a, a little piece of salt or a piece of rock and just put it towards this pile. And then what do you know? The fucking balancing thing starts to go this way instead of this way rather than yeah. me becoming that emotion and actually feeling completely less than. Like, even though I might feel a little bit less than, I'm not completely less than, you know, yeah. or more than whichever type of situation I'm in, right? Mm-hmm. Say, like, I'm... Like, I was with Dalton one time, you know, like, this was back before, like, I was kind of, like, spiritually aware, and, like, I would train him, and, like, I felt like since I had all this experience and knowledge, like, I could mentor him and guide him to the right path. And, like, to a certain, like, I was doing a really good job, in my opinion, uh, minus, like, you know, overtraining him and, you know, putting him through the ringer, um, but... Like, I felt like I, I had this, like, certain type of respect over him. And I think that's, like, what a lot of people fall into the trap of, you know? Like, yeah. ra- like rather than just realizing we're beings in this moment, right? Like, yes, I may, like I respect the knowledge you have. I respect your experience, right? Yeah. And I, I recognize that you can help me in some type of questions, areas, more than I can help myself, right? Like, that knowledge that you have. Maybe, yeah. like, me, say I go to you in mixed martial arts, right? Yeah. Like, you know more than me, clearly, right? Like, so I'm going to go to you if I have, like, a question and I want to know how to fight. Like, mm-hmm. I have done that in the past, yeah. right? But you should be 
you should be a teacher, you know? Like, you should be willing to be like, okay, here's what you do, and then yeah. execute that, right? And so, like, for me, like, if we can make that realization and be aware of it, it can help us a lot in the long run. Yeah. And, like, going back to that whole, like, kind of superiority thing, like, I have that problem too, but not necessarily in the same way. Yeah. Like, Hayden is, you know, like, me and him are always going at it in terms of, like, you know, different methods of competition. Because, like it or not, he, he's basically my rival. You know, <laughs> yeah. because, like, he all, he's looking to get better. And he's coming to me because we're fairly close in skill level with certain stuff. Like, Smash is a big, like, Smash Bros. is a big yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. But, like, for me, like, I'm, like, we're both trying to get better. That's, that's the, the flat of it. But, like, to me, like, sometimes when I'm competing a lot or, like, getting into very serious competition, my mind gets into this place where it's less about getting better and more about domination. It's about, like, you know, it's kind of this, like, this kind of philosophy, or not philosophy, but it's, like, it's not quite might makes right, but it was this saying, I think it was from, like, a Destiny weapon, but, like, it was, like, a little sub thing, but it was, like, to rend your enemies is not to see them as equals, but as objects. And occasionally I can get set, sent into that mindset of, like, mm. I don't want to just beat them, I want to crush them. <laughs> Like, I want, to, I want to beat them Damn. so, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where it's, like, I have to consciously, like, kind of bring it back. Yeah, like, that's yeah, good to a certain yeah, extent, yeah, but yeah. sometimes the beast comes out a little yeah, more. Yeah. It's as opposed to, like... It's like a competition, man. Yeah, yeah, as opposed, you know, not quite Michael Jordan level where, like, I I can't lose, but <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. it's more of, like, I want to beat them so bad they never pick up the controller again. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's, like, for me, I kind of get into that yeah, animalistic yeah. mindset yeah. when I'm competing. And I have, like, I have to be conscious of it, but it's, it's not, like, I'll play for fun, but it's yeah, different yeah. when I'm playing for fun than when I'm, like, you know, like, I'm leaning forward and yeah, fucking... Yeah, focusing you know, mad hard, yeah. And it's, like, you know, if there's good, you know, good plays, I'll, you know, you gotta, you gotta give credit where credit's due, but, like, sometimes you'll just sweep people. And that's, like, like, Hayden's been getting into chess recently. And he's come like that's he's coming into my that's my game, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and like he's he beat me once and we tied twice and I think I beat him three times in the couple games we played. Oh, nice. But it's like, you know, it's gonna be interesting seeing him get better because then I have to react to that, which is gonna make me better. And for chess, for me, I don't really get into that kind of animalistic yeah, it's, con it's, consumption mindset yeah, it's because it's more of a strategic yeah it's calmer yeah but even then it's like my my mind is firing it all all neurons are fucking blowing up like fireworks because I'm like my eyes are like darting around the board because that's like I have to be conscious of everything so that's kind of where my strategic mindset comes into play and I get to set it like I that's another form of meditation for me because oh, I, yeah, yeah. because everything else is mute except for the board there's nothing except to become the board. Yeah, but it's like, it's all about positioning and and advancement and it like there's so much, there's so much depth in chess and that's why it's like no two games are ever equal. But there's like, the more I play, the more I figure out the holes in my game and the and the more and like in my strengths. Mm. But the strengths aren't too much of a problem because like, I'm very good at pressuring my opponent. Like I'm very aggressive when I play, but I'm also safe. Sometimes I'll slip up. Everybody does. I've been slipping up a little more lately. But that's because my mindset has been elsewhere while I'm in the game. But the concept is you need to know where you are and where you're going in terms of the board. And you know, and where you are is in terms of your opponent. Where you're going is in terms of how you're going to react to their reaction. Mm. And it's the turn-based system makes it very much interesting. Because you have to, you not only have to worry about your options on the board and your position, you have to worry about their options, positioning, and vectors of attack. So there's so many variables that you have to account for. And it's it's different than memorizing patterns and move sets. You know the way the pieces move, but the positioning is really where it, where the depth of the game lies. Because sometimes I'll sacrifice pieces for better positioning. So, you know, and Hayden, like, because I 
played him before, you know, in certain, you know, different game. Like, I can, I know my opponent. And especially in chess, he likes the tunnel vision. So I can set up a situation in which I can rely on his tunnel vision to attack a higher piece. Mm-hmm. Because, he, he, you know, it's like, look at the shiny, attack the shiny, but you're getting cut in the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I can kind of, I've, I've engineered situations within games we've played where I counted on his tele, on his tunnel vision to make a better move. And that's, that's, less, that's more reading your opponent and understanding how he plays as opposed to the game. But it's another vector that of of competition that is within the game. Yeah. And there's so you know, the way I'm talking about this, you can see I played this a lot. But it's like there's so much value in this game. Yeah, definitely. That not a lot of people look at. Like a lot of people see the surface. You need to dig six feet under to yeah, see the yeah, the yeah. like the buried treasure. Yeah, hundred percent. Definitely. Yeah, and yeah, I mean like that type of competition, like like competition in general. Like I have definitely stepped away from competition. Just like how my life has changed within these past two yeah. years, right? Like I am definitely, and I could like I don't know, Dalton's watching this right now, but like Dalton and I used to be mad competitive in crew, right? Like mm-hmm. in, in just other areas of our lives, and it would become between us, right? It would get personal, right? It would get to that extent, like, and that is the only thing we would ever argue about, right? Be like, I don't, I don't even remember, like, what the fuck, like back in high school, but like, dude, this shit would become between us, dude, mm-hmm. like, and we. <sighs> I don't know, man. It would just lead to... Be, yeah, like I said, it would become very personal and it would cause a lot of conflict. And I think a lot of times, like, kind of what you were describing... In, in a sense, I'm not saying, like, what you are what you actually are. I'm yeah. saying, like, what I was kind of picking up on what you were saying was... Like, when you want to crush them, right? Yeah. You want to dominate them into yeah. the fucking ground. Like, you know, see how much separation there is there? Like, exactly. you, want, you want... Like, I'm not saying what you, like, what you want to do yeah. is bad, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, like, look at it for what it is, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you want to put this motherfucker in the ground. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, like, you want to, you are so attached to outcome, right, that you want to put this motherfucker, like, on another goddamn yeah, planet. Yeah, right? it's yeah. literally, you know what it is? It's yeah. like, it's the whole concept of, I'm about to end this man's whole career. <laughs> and it's like, like, that's exactly what it is. That's, that's exactly what it is. It's like, I'm going to beat you so bad, uh, yeah. you're never going to touch yeah, this again. Yeah, and it's, oh, I, I think it, and, like, there's there's both, like, from, from the way I look at it is it's a ne- it's it's overtly a negative mindset, mm, but oh there yeah. is there is a silver lining. Oh, yeah. To that m- malicious... Like, I'm going to prove everyone fucking wrong, dude. Yeah, like, but, yeah, but, like, that's a thing, too. Like, if you want to crush someone in that way, <laughs> yeah. it means you're connected to practicing and getting good. Like, that's the silver yeah. lining. It's yeah, exactly. like, if I want to yeah. crush people, if I want to beat people so game. fucking bad yeah. that they never touch the game again, yeah. I need to get good enough to where yeah. I can be that guy. Yeah. You know, you have to work up to the demon, yeah, but it's, it's not something you should be working through. It's, it's a byproduct of me wanting to get better. Yeah. It's, it's the dark reflection of getting good, yeah. for me at least. Yeah. Because, you know, and going back to the whole domination thing, there was a... It was Star Wars Rebels. It was the last duel between Maul and Obi-Wan. And Obi-Wan was saying, like, you know, if you define yourself by what you possess and your ability to dominate, then you truly have nothing. And it's like, that's, like, it's, like, that's another thing. Like, it's, you, external sources of wisdom. That's in a kid Star Wars show. It's a great fucking show. But, like, that's that's so yeah. profound. Yeah. It's like, if you define yourself by your ability to take from others, then you truly have nothing. Yeah. And, like, I fall into that mindset sometimes, but I remember, yeah. I am not pursuing this to... To who discourage others. To the full extent. Yeah, yeah. I am. Yeah. I am pursuing it so that I may master it. Yeah, and I think I think I, in a way, like kind of said that earlier. And, yeah. And it, no, 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 no. I'm not saying I like that direct point, but like, I think I was kind of touching on that a bit, like that area that you just said. Mm-hmm. It's like that middle ground between the two, right? Where you gotta, you, uh, yeah. It's like you said, it's a double sided coin, right? Like that negative energy can fucking fuel you, and 
but you can't let it overwhelm you. Yeah, can't let it overwhelm you and completely like take over your life, right? Because like you'll isolate yourself, right? Yeah. You like you'll put yourself in a goddamn box mm-hmm. if that's the case, right? And no one will want to be around you because you're fucking okay. Yeah, let's just say you're 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 doing what you want. You're crushing everyone mm-hmm. in. Yeah, but then no Gen- one, no, no one's one, gonna want to play yeah, with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's like that—that's the thing. Like, I'll get into being that. Being aware of your environment. Yeah, absolutely. Being aware of your <laughs> yeah, like yeah. going back to the competition thing. Like, yeah. I, you know, me and Hayden will get you know we'll we'll get frustrated yeah, with each yeah, other, yeah, yeah. but we'll know it's like, hey, yeah, it's all in good fun. Yeah, you know, we yeah, recognize yeah. that uh-huh. it's like. Fuck you! But that was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, like, yeah, there's so yeah, many things yeah. that have happened. It's just like, like were, that was bullshit. And yeah. We both recognize it, but it's just like you know, yeah. or we get done dirty. But it's yeah. like, fuck you! But that was good. You know, yeah. it's always back to a point of getting better mm. and not yeah. like pursuing domination over yeah. one another. I was watching tag, uh, like professional tag on ESPN, and like what you just, dude, it's so fun, dude. Yeah, okay, it's like parkour, right? And parkour, but like competition. Yeah. Uh, intention based and it's like watchable you know parkour is definitely watchable but like after a certain amount of time it's like but these guys are fucking bouncing around you know like a parkour course mm-hmm. and one guy's the chaser one guy's like running away from the chaser mm-hmm. and like what well, well, you just said right the guy will like tag him or he'll get away and the guy who like tags him or the guy who wins right or gets away after a certain amount of time and doesn't mm-hmm. get tagged will be like ha ha motherfucker like you didn't get me and they'll be like and he'll start taunting the other dude, right? But then they'll be like, I've never seen, like, such um, sportsmanship. They'll just be like, dude, fucking awesome, though. Well, you know I, what mean, I mean, after like, that, you know? I do it. Martial arts, that's the big one. Yeah, yeah. Like, few people will understand what it's like to beat the shit out of someone. And then, like, dude, that was Yeah, nice. exactly. Like, after a boxing match, they'll, like, yeah, they'll exactly. fucking be like, yo, respect, because, man. Because it's like, they both know what, what it took to get here. Yeah. And at the professional level. And then you realize, like, this man is my equal. But, e- but even then, like, like, it's, you know, that's the whole, that, that's how it should be. You know, sportsmanship is very good. Like, competition is great, but you can't become consumed by the idea that you're better than anyone. Yeah. I'm like, your skills will speak to, for themselves. You don't have to speak for your skills. Yeah. Yeah, facts. And one last thing I'll say on that, and I, I kind of was, was touching on earlier. If you know who you are, don't expect others to exactly replicate that back to you because yeah. you like no matter what they say you know who the fuck you are yeah. right and so when you feel those defensive feelings when you feel like you're threatened right because someone doesn't see what you see yeah. but you know for fact just fucking let it be dude let yeah. it be that's their opinion you know like that's yeah. their belief you have you know right because because you know your experience. Like, you're yeah. living it literally every second of your life. Yeah, like, no matter what anyone says, they don't know what you've gone through. Yeah. And they don't know where you are and how much yeah. you've changed from yeah. who you used to be. Be that from a better, like, a, a, it probably, hopefully should be from, you know, a positive standpoint. But sometimes it isn't yeah, always. Yeah, but either way, you need to know who you are. And you need to know that, depend, like, you are the independent variable. You cannot be dependent on all these other ideas. Escape the matrix. I put my phone on, do not disturb. Don't wanna talk, I don't wanna hear a word. I got these feelings I be feeling inside. Try not to lose my.